Hi everyone, welcome to Riding Tiger with Arijit and this is the 60th episode. So my God, so we have been taking interview of uh, mind-blowing people from across the world and this is definitely my pleasure to welcome one of my very new friends from various uh, different background. I, I How can I probably introduce her? But before I do that, before I go for introduction of Stephanie, my friend, uh, let me talk a little bit about what is Riding Tiger with Arjit Bhattacharya. So Riding Tiger is a very basic concept. A lot of people ask me about entrepreneurship. They ask me that, uh, what is entrepreneurship? Who is an entrepreneur? So I usually, in a funny format, give a reply that entrepreneurship is riding a tiger. And let me explain that particular concept, why it is. So it's basically your life. So when you take your life in your lap, when you're a kid, you actually feed it with milk. And that cub uh, is a sweet one. Um, he or she, it actually looks at you in a tiny eyes, smiles at you, uh, feed on milk, and sometimes play with you. But eventually you have an intention that this cub will become big. And that cub, when it is big, is a full grown tiger. And now you are riding on it. And when you're riding, you have a risk that if you stop, if your tiger is hungry, it might attack you. So it depends on a person how they treat their own business, their own life, how they feed it. And when they feed it, the feeding happens with raw meat. And that raw meat, in the metaphor, is money. And when you feed your business, your life with money, it might happen that you're overfeeding it. If you overfeed that, it becomes slow. So a lot many of our life become slow when you don't know how to manage money. You pump in money like anything and you feel that probably you can buy everything and anything with money. But sometimes the whole concept is actually a myth. The real life begins where probably my friend is living and I can see there is a jungle in the background. And I was talking to her just yesterday itself and I saw that She's living inside the nature. There's a sea in front of her home. And not only that, she is an artistic in nature, a nurse by profession, a entrepreneur by choice. Not only that, my God, if I go on, probably it will end the entire show. So we keep this short with 20 minutes. So I will ask uh, Stephanie to introduce herself Stephanie, I hope that you're doing amazing and there is a, uh, I can see that there is a rain probably that's happening uh, outside. How are you doing? And if you can, if you can tell us about a little bit about your journey, about your life, how you started, where you're schooling, it will be really, really great. Wow, thank you. How exciting. So yes, um, as you can see in the background, um, I'm living in nature and specifically i'm living in the jungle of costa rica and it is such a magical raw real and authentic experience to be able to live in such a raw and real part of the world and if i go back to where i grew up i grew up in new zealand so being surrounded by nature is something that i've taken for granted all my life I lived in the country of New Zealand and it, it's, it was so beautiful to be able to live there. And it wasn't until I started moving and traveling that I got to see the luxury and the blessing it was to be surrounded by, by nature. And um, a little bit about my past to be able to go into where I am now is um, I registered as a nurse and COVID, funnily enough, stopped me from continuing that profession because I moved to London just before COVID, which meant that for me to requalify in that country, I had to go to school, sit an exam, but all of those facilities had shut down. So it gave me an opportunity to really look at what are the skills that I have and what do I love doing in this world? And what am I good at that I could transform into a virtual product, into a virtual business? And what I became from being a nurse is I became a body authenticity coach. 
wow. and how that came about was because if I go like way back, I've I've dealt with a lot of times in my life where I was I was like really self analytical. I was drowning in shame and doubt for who I am, both internally and externally. And I put a lot of emphasis on the way that I looked and that in order to in order to be wanted or loved or appreciated or seen in this world, I had to look a certain way. And so it put me down a pathway of eating disorders. And during this time of really being in the self-destructive self, this self-destructive state where I put all of my self-worth on my physical image, I lost my job. I failed at uni twice. I became homeless. I remember Christmas 2016. I was sleeping in a car in um, Dunedin, New Zealand. I had basically destructed my relationship with my mom and my siblings and had no real friends to rely on because I was just so, so destructive that everyone around me had sort of moved away. And also, um, now that I've come out of it, I also see I did have a world of support, but I couldn't see them. I didn't know how to reach out to them. And through all of this work and this healing, which took about 15 years, I am committed to having the world divorce their self-worth from their body image and prioritize the relationship they have with themselves. Like literally forming a relationship with yourself, like prioritizing dating yourself, you know, and moving through just like you would date a spouse. Right. Just really look at building a relationship with you being engaged to you, being married to you, having a relationship with you where you know your strengths, your weak your weaknesses, and get that intimately connected with yourself as the foundation to living a life that you love so that your self-worth is something that's at the core of your existence. So that's where I am and that's what I do. Brilliant. So that means that you are in a path of uh, exploring yourself. So there is a uh, two different way of explaining that. One portion is... Uh, we as a human being, we have a soul and the soul is full of energy. And that energy usually travels from one body to another body. That's one kind of concept. So when you are in this mortal body, you are now exploring your mortal body at this stage of your life. Uh, but then at the same time, when you took birth in this mortal world, uh, definitely the, the soul traveled uh, from another body, from maybe another universe, maybe another timeline, we don't know. But in this life, when you are trying to explore yourself and you made a beautiful statement that you are marrying yourself, that means you started loving yourself. And you mm -hmm. said that you want to give this knowledge to the world. So that means you want to coach people. You want to tell people that why they should love themselves. May I understand how do you start from a person who is probably totally, totally blocked in his or her own work world, in their own family life, in their own probably uh, uh, small and big nitty gritties, which is there in the in the usual world. So how do you start coaching one person, if you can give a little bit of idea? For sure. So in, in my blueprint that I've created, I've adapted this from the health model of New Zealand, which is called the Tafari Tapufa. And what that is, is it's a house with four walls. That's what it translates to. And so in this blueprint, there are four walls to you discovering your authentic self and building a relationship with yourself. And it's the journey. So it moves from your physical health to your mental health, to your spiritual health, and then your relational health, which is how you interact with other people in this world. So how I would start off is unpacking that physical health, which is literally your relationship to your physical self, bearing yourself naked and literally being with the opinions and the judgments and thoughts you have about you. And it's the kinesthetic, tangible act of being naked where you get to surface and purge that authentic relationship you have about yourself that is most probably not serving you. And while being physically naked, you get to be naked internally. You get to purge those thoughts, those opinions and beliefs, and then we get to go to work on them. And it's inside of purging them 
and then also creating where you want to be, that resistance shows. And in that resistance, we get to work through it and eliminate all of those toxic thoughts and behaviors and opinions about you that are stopping you from having an intimate, loving relationship. So Stephanie, that means actually, if I uh, look at to the, uh, probably the couple of spiritual structure, it's called opening up your chakras. And the way you are taking this is a way of opening up a couple of chakras, uh, for an example, the mind and the relationship with mind and body. This is really brilliant. And I'm sure that you have a, a website wherein people can probably check you up and probably can connect you. And um, I got to know that you are coming up with probably a collaboration book. And uh, could you please talk a little bit about the same? Because I'm totally uh, curious to understand uh, this kind of concept of accepting yourself and then exploring yourself needs a lot of courage. It's not that easy. It's not that easy at mm. all. So from a perspective of a common person, when they try to understand that how they can open up their mindset, which you are saying that being naked is basically opening up your own mindset uh, from inside, inside core of your heart. So if you can touch this a little bit about the possibilities which uh, any normal human being can do. Example, probably I snatched you from uh, uh, watching whales today. So if you are there watching the whales, I'm sure that you will have a different kind of uh, happiness. You will have a different kind of relationship with that fish. Can you please explain when you watch any fish which is swimming in the sea, it's a big one, and probably roaring on the water. How do you feel and how do you express that feeling? Well, there's, there's definitely peace because all of my energy and my presence is dedicated to being present in the moment because no longer am I fighting or hoping or... So like back in the day... I would be so fixated on how I was sounding, how I was looking, that I wouldn't be present. I'd be so internal to myself, questioning, analyzing myself and how I was being presented with people around me and double guessing everything that those whales would just simply be a fish in the water if I would even see them. Like they could probably let me, swim let by. Me, let me, let me cut you in between, Stephanie. Let me cut you in between. Do you really want to present yourself in front of the people or you want to present yourself in front of the nature? Well, we are nature. We are yeah. one. And right. that's that's the amazing thing to get. Yeah, um, what's, the, like, what's, the, what's the concept? You want to present yourself to people or you want to present yourself towards the nature? Being as a nature. Do I want to present myself to people? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. I'm not sure I get your question. That was that was my understanding. That's why I asked this question. Okay. So for an example, when you watch films, do you prefer to watch it alone or you are, you prefer to watch it with your close friends or maybe some other people? What do you want to do? Oh, definitely with other people, for sure. For sure. Um, my life is a space to experience it with others now. Which and means, Which means you want to share things with uh, lots many other people. You want to share love. You want to share care. Yeah? Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. And, and sharing the, the ability to be ourselves. Like when I'm with myself, I create a space for other people to be genuine because I'm insignificant about many things whether it be quirks or I'm fully self-expressed and it really creates a space for people to be at home with themselves around me so I'm very committed to having people around me sharing my story so that people get the essence of what it is to be at home with yourself what it is to be self-expressed and what it is to really accept themselves no matter how they look no matter how they sound no matter how they be 
Stephanie, if I'm not wrong, you had a beautiful life and you had a couple of different kind of experience. I, I shouldn't comment whether that is good or bad, but that's the experience that you had. But I know as a friend of yours that you have committed yourself as a volunteer to a few bit of countries as well. Why didn't you talk about that? Why didn't you tell our audience where all you have been and what are the kind of... Ah. Okay. So my first ever place that I traveled to is Nepal. And why I chose Nepal is because one of my idols is called Sir Edmund Hillary. And he's known for, well, he's very well known in New Zealand, but he's known for being the first person in the world to climb Mount Everest. But I knew so much more about him than majority of people. He has an encyclopedia. I read it. I love him. He supported the nation so much in eradicating TB. He would move between New Zealand and Nepal and provide so much money and abundance of love, joy, and resource to this country that I had to go. So when I went, um, I had this really awesome experience of being able to volunteer at the medical center and at the primary school that he set up, which was absolutely just an incredible experience. And then from there, it really sparked this travel bug and this want to contribute and this want to be with as many cultures as I could possibly be with. And so then I moved to Kenya and in Kenya, I had already um, graduated with my degree in physiology. And so with that, alongside my passion for wanting to be a nurse and a midwife, I worked at medical centers and was supporting parents in um, being nutritioned. I was also supporting with HIV and educating schools and communities on reducing risks of HIV. I also was working in street schools, which was an incredible experience to just see how much joy and love one can have by being seen and noticed and educated. Like in the areas I've traveled, kids are so eager to learn. And it's it was just such a contrast to the education system that I'd been brought up in in New Zealand where people were fighting not to go to school. So it was a pleasure to be there. And I was even teaching children, I think ages 16 to 18 about physiology and how the blood was pumping. So it was really awesome to be able to take the passions of physiology and be able to actually teach street kids these, these, these awesome systems. And then I went to India and India is where I learned what it is to receive and be unconditional love like it is a country that will always have a piece of my heart and this is where I worked at baby orphanages disabled children's orphanages I even um supported a few friends with their elderly parents living in their homes and just really being around this really tight community family space where everyone is just willing to contribute to their to their own people and it's just been really amazing moving from culture to culture and how each of them works in their own rhythm. And now being in Costa Rica, um, I live in the jungle of Costa Rica, as I mentioned at the start, and there's a school in the jungle and I, I teach them English and I don't know a bar of Spanish. Well, I know a little bit of Spanish, not that great. Um, and just being a contribution and me speaking English around them is supporting them and learning English. And it's been such a blessing. They get to teach me Spanish while I teach them English. And it's just been incredible to be able to be with children of all cultures and be part of the culture. Cause that's what I'm committed to. Whenever I move to a new country, I don't take for granted that I'm a tourist or, or, um, somebody who's not actually part of the culture. I, I make sure that I make an effort to immerse myself in the culture, be with the people and learn from them and contribute what I can as a, as a thanks and a gratitude for allowing me to come to their country. You know, Stephanie, uh, I, I took interview of a lot, many people. I, I took, uh, probably people in our platform, which is World Leader Summit. Uh, every year we get 
150 plus speakers on our yearly summit. Uh, probably I met more than 6,000 startups in my life, like more than that, maybe I met 10,000 of them, uplifted around 6,000 of them, uh, connected them without any kind of expectation from any one of them. But for the first time, let me declare in front of everyone, for the first time, when I'm taking your interview, I'm listening to a lady who is giving unconditional love to anyone and everyone. Mm -hmm. When you give education to kids, when you spend time with kids, that's the biggest blessing that you can have from the universe. And the reason I asked you that, do you want to enjoy mm -hmm. well with your people or your friends or alone? You give me an answer that you want to do it um, with your friends, with people. It shows that you are actually a giver. And uh, believe me or not, if you are a giver, it's just like ATM machine. When you, when you are doing something in one bank, accept that happiness will have your acceptance from another ATM machines. So you'll get multiple de happiness across the world. I wish that you will get all those happiness that is there in the world and you smile, ever smile, ever smile. So I have another thing that I do, which is there in uh, Riding Tiger. I, I call it as a rapid fire question. So I'm gonna ask you five uh, words. I'm gonna give you words and whatever comes in your mind, you just need to tell me. For an example, if I tell you white, whatever comes in your mind when you listen to white, you need to tell me, is it okay? Okay, so it can be a sentence or just whatever pops it's up. It can be a sentence, yes. Okay, oh my, the pressure is on. Okay. Life. Happiness. Love. Forever. Um, purple. I'm firing one word back. That's all that's coming up for me. Okay, I'll try harder. I'll do sentences now. Purple. <laughs> How funny. The lake in Nyavasha, um, in Kenya. That's what comes up. Okay. Um, food. Oh, culture. India, Kenya, everywhere I've been. Okay. One last question to you. It's not about rapid fire. Imagine that you are in a park and, uh, there is a beautiful bench and in that bench you can sit only with one person, right? The, the weather is sunny, the breeze is really good, temperature is amazing, you are not in the winter, you are in a autumn weather and you really want to sit with somebody and uh, want to spend maybe a couple of hours with that person. So if I ask you the question, whom would you like to spend time with? What would be your answer and why? Oh, you know what? The first thing that comes to mind is my dad. Um, because the last time I saw him, I was five and a half years old. And when I went to London in 2019 to meet him, I found out he passed away eight years previous. So I never got to see him. And it would be just a blessing to be able to sit down with him and for him to see me as an adult and for him to know that I've forgiven him. Um, it was a, we have a past of domestic violence and stuff. So that's why we separated at such a young age. And just for me to be able to share that with him, that I've forgiven him and that he's an incredible human being and that I love him and just know that, just to know that he knows that. And then <laughs> the second person that came up was Mahatma Gandhi because I absolutely love that man. I think what he stood for was incredible and the way that he revolutionized the world of being a peacemaker. Um, yeah, but what came to mind first, what came to my heart actually was my dad. Brilliant. Stephanie from uh, Planet Earth, it's been a pleasure to take your interview. I wish that I can have some people from Venice, uh, Mars, uh, Saturn, and maybe from Jupiter. But yeah, it's been a pleasure to have you in Riding Tiger with Arijit. Thank you so much for coming here and sharing your insights, 
hearing about you, yourself, and your life. It's not that easy to open up. It's not easy to become the way you are and the way you are becoming humble day in and day out and giving back to the society and the community. Keep doing your great work. I wish that we meet soon, maybe somewhere in, uh, again, in planet Earth. I wish we mm -hmm. could go to some another planet, but, well, we have a limited option. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for watching and keep commenting in our LinkedIn, keep commenting in our Facebook, keep commenting in our YouTube. So we'll be coming back once again with another great episode with another amazing personality who is ready to ride their own tiger. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs>